Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews Heroes of Faith Gallery. Our next person on the list up for today is uh, Moses. Amen. I like Moses. We're going to be in uh, chapter 11, verses 23 through 29. The title of today's message is Faith Decisions. Faith Decisions. Guys, we have uh, opportunities of, amongst us every day. We have decisions to, to make. Some for good, some important. Some are just minuscule. Some, some small. But uh, decisions nonetheless every day that face us. Some of the decisions are made for us automatically because of our indecision. You know, we, don't, we choose not to to decide on something, we procrastinate, and uh, sometimes it's made for us. But that is our decision as well, because we didn't decide. But it's still our decision, because we didn't decide. Now, Christians, uh, guys, they are, we are, uh, ours is right, we, are, we have been, we have been extended righteousness by God through His Son. We are in a right standing with God. But we can fall out of fellowship with God. And we fall out of fellowship with God when we start making wrong decisions. When we don't make right decisions. And what is the definition of righteousness anyway? Making right, living right. Making the right decisions. Amen. We've got righteousness extended to us that's going to get us into heaven. Get us a, a eternal life. But we still have a daily life that we have to live through. Amen. And as Christians... Uh, those choices need to be right choices, not, uh, not wrong choices. I'm going to go through some of this stuff. Today's message is uh, already in an outline form. In fact, if you just got jot down some of the stuff I'm talking about right now, you can call that intro. That's the introduction to today's message. And we have seven verses to read to go through. And each one of those verses, you can just write down 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and all the way through, there are 29, I believe. And, uh, yes, 29. And just leave a space, and I'll give you the, the topic there. And, and uh, there, there's your note outline right there. Seven topics to get through. All righty then. It's important for us to understand, guys, too, that, uh, see, we get caught up in our circumstances, don't we? Our focus seems to be on our circumstances more than anything else. But, guys, there were decisions that we made to get us in those circumstances, probably. Sometimes we're, we're stuff's thrown at us that uh, uh, we didn't see coming. And maybe we didn't do the cause. But uh, how we act in the midst of that, those circumstances, is, uh, is the important thing as well. But that's, we have decisions even then. To make, you know, either to, to uh, uh, follow God's lead and and because uh, God's going to tell you, you're going to go through it anyway. You're not going to get out of it. You can pray to God this act and get out of it, but He's not going to. That's not how He operates. He's going to use that that uh, the circumstances that we find ourselves in in order to teach us. In fact, I heard a preacher uh, a while back that I think it was Adrian Rogers said there's three uh, there's three. Uh, kinds of, of people, of, of Christians, and those that are coming out of, the, those that are in tribulation, in circumstances, those coming out of the tribulation, and those going in tribulation. Uh, but that's, but you guarantee you guys, you're going to go through, because that's, uh, that's just it. It's just how do we, how do we, uh, how do we act while we're going through? See enough. Now Christians, uh, Guys, how we handle our decisions, that, is, uh, that uh, marks us or, or it, uh, uh, it shows our Christian maturity how we go through these decisions or, or decisions that we make as Christians. Uh, every, every decision that Christians that we make is an opportunity to glorify God. It's an opportunity to bring Him glory. We bring Him glory by obeying Him, and, uh, and 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 it brings glory to His name because we obey His His uh, His commandments in our situation. People will see us and see the joy in our heart, 
and the, uh, this the I don't know this the the peace in our heart when we're going through these things, and that brings glory to God. The ancient Greeks had a uh, had a statue. His name was Opportunity. This statue had flowing hair in the front of the statue. But if you go around the back of the statue, it was completely bald. The hair stopped about right there. <laughs> it was flowing down right here, but it stopped about right there. It's completely bald. What it represented is while the opportunity is coming at you, you have an opportunity. You, you, have, you can grasp it. But once it goes by, it's gone. You, you can't grab it. It's gone. It's, it's, you can't gra grab it anymore. I, I, I like that. I, I'm not saying we should have a statue like that, but that's that's true. I mean, it's the, the opportunities come at us, and if we don't take advantage of those opportunities, they're gone. We can't go back and, and find them. You know, some of the things that keep us from uh, from doing God's work, in fact, is fear and things of that nature. We miss the opportunities that are before us. An opportunity to, to speak God's word, an opportunity to, uh, to help someone in need or something like that, those opportunities come if we don't take advantage of them they're gone and that guys is a travesty because we miss an opportunity to bring god glory amen you know there aren't very many of y'all here today so you need to speak up with your amen amen. amen all right <laughs> thank you now abel abel we know how abel i mean that's uh, uh abel he uh first let's talk about adam Adam had opportunities too, but what did Adam and Eve do right up first rattle out of the box? After they got pitched, after they got murdered, they sinned, they did what they weren't supposed to do, and uh, they, been dead, they dismissed it. They didn't bring glory to God. And that Guys, and we have been following in His footsteps ever since, haven't we? Right. We've been following. We can't blame Him. Because we would make the same mistake. And gladly probably would do it. And, but anyway, his kid Abel, we, we went over Abel here uh, not that long, too long ago. And uh, Abel, he made the right sacrifice before God and obeyed and obedient and did what God expected him to do, what he asked him to do. So he was counted as righteousness to him. And Cain, he wanted to do what he wanted to do and, instead of what God wanted him to do. So it was not counted as righteousness for him. He paid the price. He ended up killing his brother. Y'all know how that story goes. Enoch, he, he made lots and lots of right choices. He brought glory to God's name every day. The reason I know that is because God was so pleased with him that one day they went walking and God just stood walking right on into heaven. Y'all know how that story went. Noah, his whole family in the midst of a, of a time when everything was going crazy, and we find ourselves in that kind of time too, don't we? There's a bunch of stuff going on around here. It's just crazy. It's hard for a Christian to be in. But uh, uh, we are we are reminded that uh, we are to be in this world, but not of this world. Abraham, he lived a great life of faith. He was tested sometimes. He passed that on down to his, his kid Isaac that did the same thing. You know, he he wasn't always faithful like he should be. He, he doubted and, and, uh, and, and acted out of fear, which we should not do. Faith should drive away fear. Amen? Guys, Satan deceives us. Uh, and there's a... What Satan always wants to do is to make the wrong thing, sin, look good. And it is, isn't it? Y'all don't come up here and lie now. You know it tastes good. It feels good. If it didn't, you wouldn't be doing it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it. But on the other hand, he wants to make God's way look like it's old, outdated, and just boring. Amen? But I know the opposite of that, God, because God's way is life. In abundance. Uh, peace. Joy. See, the thing that the devil offers, this thing that Tonight a whole bunch of people are going to be mixed up in. You know, I thought about doing a, a I did a, I took time out of Hebrews and did a, a Christmas message uh, last week. And, and I thought, well, do I do a Christmas Eve, I mean a, a New Year's Eve message today? I thought, no, I need to go and finish with, going with the with this. But, but is it, this is a good message for today, isn't it? 
We had the opportunity tonight to make right choices, amen. We can either just slip right on into debauchery and jump like that, or we can make the right choices and remember that we are ambassadors for God and that the whole world's looking at us and we have opportunity tonight to bring glory to God. Amen? Or we can go the opposite direction and, and, uh, and just, uh, just slip on into the debauchery. In fact, I think it's, I believe it's Romans chapter 7 uh, where Paul, Paul talks about that. He said, you know, don't be drunk on wine that leads to debauchery, but be drunk on the Holy Spirit. Amen? I ain't saying get out there and act a fool like you're... <laughs> but, uh, you know, some of the things I do when I... Or I did when I was drunk, uh, used to drink. But uh, some of the stuff I used to do, you know, I was, I was pretty silly. I was pretty silly. But, uh, so why, why can't we just be that silly with, about God? Amen? Like I said, I'm not saying do some of the stupid things that you did when you was drunk, but I am saying, you know, just lose your, don't lose your ambition, your, uh, I don't, yeah, your, uh, it's not what I'm looking for, that's not the word I'm looking for. Y'all know, y'all, can y'all see it? Read it back to me. <laughs> your inhibitions, there we go. Why didn't somebody say that to me? <laughs> Y'all just said, yep, that's it. <laughs> Don't lose your inhibitions by alcohol and just, and just losing, losing control. The Bible says that we are to have control. To have control. Amen? So don't do that. Uh, he went on to say, be drunk on the, on the Holy Spirit. Lose your inhibitions to God and let Him guide you. Amen? Don't, don't turn yourself over to alcohol. Turn yourself over to the Holy Spirit. I guess that's what I'm saying. And I better get to the message because uh, I don't want to keep you just too awful long. Amen? I hope the reason a lot of people are missing, not missing today because, because of the day that it is. Anyway, we're all looking for a right standing God. You know, the devil always deceives us and, and his job is to do that. And if you don't believe that, then you just read the book of Job. His job is to tempt us as we, uh, God made him to do that. And, and uh, he does his job. And just because God has condemned him does not mean that he, he does not still work for him because he is in control. God is. He's not going to have somebody out there just doing their own thing all the time. What he does is under God's control. Amen? Yeah. All righty then. Let's take verse number 23, the first one. Faith accepts God's plan. I'm just going to read it. Verse 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him uh, for three months after he, he was born. Because the, uh, they saw he was uh, no ordinary child. And they were not afraid of the king's edict. Well, what was going on there is, uh, you know, I didn't mention Joseph uh, before because it stopped at Isaac and then went on down to Jacob and then Joseph. But Joseph, uh, he led the Israelites because of a drought into Egypt. So he used the power of uh, and of uh, of the Pharaoh of the of the uh, of the office, so to speak, to bring uh, to bring aid to the Israelites, and they were well received at that time. But since that time, I don't know how many years went by, but. Uh, it came, it came to a point, in fact, I think it was more like about three or four hundred years that went by. Because if I'm not mistaken, it was five hundred years from the time that, uh, uh, that, that uh, they were brought in or they came into Egypt through Joseph. It was five hundred years before they went into the promised land. I believe I'm right. I might be wrong there. I might have my numbers off just a little bit. But my point is that they were in Egypt for a very long time. And there was a different Pharaoh that was, uh, that was there that, uh, that didn't know them like the Pharaoh did when Joseph was uh, second in command in, in Egypt. But uh, anyway, the numbers, their numbers had gotten so great. Because remember the promise of Abraham. He said, I will make your descendants as, nu as numerous as the stars and as the sand on the seashore. He was making good on his promise. And the Israelites, guys, they were great in the land. They were, they were uh, in Egypt. 
Their numbers had grown so so high that the Pharaoh then was running a little bit scared, afraid he might, they might just take over. So he uh, he 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 made an edict or, or wrote an edict, or how you want to say it. He he commanded that uh, I think it was the firstborn of the uh, uh, of the Israelites to be drowned in the Nile River. That's pretty bad. Babies, all the babies be born in, uh, that were born drowned in the Nile River. It's pretty drastic. Amen. But the story is, is that uh, Moses, uh, Moses' mom and dad was uh, Am Amram, I think is how he said, but I'm not, I think that's even wrong. But that's uh, that was his father, and uh, and Yohakbet, <laughs> Yohakbet, I think is how you say his mama's name. Miriam was his sister. They hid him from the king for three months. And they planned, they hitched the plan, they, they uh, uh, birthed the plan to, uh, they knew where the Pharaoh's daughter was bathing uh, daily in the Nile River. And they put Moses, the baby Moses, y'all know how that story went, in a basket. It floated him down river, hoping that uh, Pharaoh's daughter would see him and, and, and save him. Because guys, think about it. If he had been found by anybody else but Pharaoh's daughter, a young lady that would, would have mercy on him because being a baby, they'd have drowned him. They'd have drowned him. Miriam was, uh, his sister was, Moses' sister was, was watching from a distance and, and, and uh, as soon as the Pharaoh's daughter picked the baby up, can y'all say, oh, that's what, it, that's what she did. She said, oh. She, picked, she knew he was a Hebrew. She could tell immediately that he was a Hebrew. He was not the you no know, wasn't an Egyptian. But she just you know, she just couldn't she wanted to raise him, decide oh, this is I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of this baby as they planned. And uh, Miriam suggested to her, because she like I said, she was following closely, listening to everything. Man, you know, you need to get one of these Hebrew uh, women to to nurse him. So I mean uh, so uh, I, I don't make me say her name again, but I think it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yoak bed, that's good enough. Yoak, 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 yoak bed, yoak bed. Hey, you know what I'm trying to say is it was Moses' mom. Is who it is. But they, uh, uh, anyway, she made it so that she could raise her own son in the Pharaoh's house. That's pretty cool. That's pretty good, isn't it? Saved him, and uh, guys, she raised him. Uh, in the ways of and taught him uh, the uh, you know about the, the promise of Abraham and things of that nature because he knew he was Hebrew even though he was he was being raised as a, as a prince. Alrighty then, what I guess what I'm trying to say, guys, is that God's uh, faith accepts God's plan. His his mom and dad had faith that God had. Uh, uh, great things in store for their baby. So they had faith and their faith was demonstrated when they put him in the basket and floated him down that river. So faith accepts God and follows God's plan. They didn't know what, what he was going to do. They didn't know he was going to grow up and deliver uh, the Israelites from Egypt. They didn't know that. They just knew that God had some uh, plans for him. All right, verse 24. Faith rejects the world's prestige. By faith, Moses, when he had gone, when, when he had grown up, refused uh, to be to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Guys, he was brought up just like I said uh, uh, by his mom as well as, as the Egyptians. I mean, uh, he had the prestige of that of being a prince. There, but he chose to uh, to uh, uh, his the Israelites plight instead of uh, instead of uh, in other words to be his mother's son instead of Pharaoh's uh, Pharaoh's daughter's son. So faith, I mean, <laughs> he had everything he wanted, guys. For forty years, he he lived in the palace. He had everything that he wanted. Everything that was there was everything that he ever wanted, he had. Guys, he uh, he, cho he chose uh, uh, 
like I said, he chose the Israelites. Joseph, looking back at that, Joseph, he uh, he used the, the power of of, uh, of the Pharaoh of the of, of the Pharaoh's position to help the Israelites, and Moses is opposing. He finds himself in a place where he has to oppose the, the Pharaoh and his power. But he gave up his prestige, all the prestige that he had. But he was looking, as we're going to see here just a little bit, towards the reward, which was greater than, than Egypt. You know, I'm thinking about Jesus at this time. That, uh, uh, you know, he's the one that... Uh, he gave up great prestige, did he? I mean, you, you think about it, guys. You think you think Egypt is 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 great or was great back then? How would you like to be on the throne of God, be in that palace, and yet give that up to come down to this earth to be a servant for us? He was obedient even to the cross. That's what the the Bible says. That it became a servant for us. To show us the way. Let's take verse 25 now. Faith rejects the world's pleasure. He chose to, to be mistreated along with the, with the people of, of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. The last part of that is, is what I wanted to... Uh, to uh, to point out to you guys, sin tastes good at first, but it is just, it's short time, it's just short. It's over with, and then you're left wanting. You're needing something. God is fulfilling. Through Christ, we are complete. We're not wanting any longer. Unless we get out of fellowship with Him. Through our wrong choices. But, uh, Moses, he chose, uh, let, let's read that again. I'm going to read that again and, then, and preach on it a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next one. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of, of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. That's us. We choose the mis, uh, to be uh, mistreated as Christians because the world does that, do they not? I mean, we're, we're persecuted as not like they are, were back then and not like they are over in the Middle East, but we are persecuted. We're looked down on. Amen? But uh, we choose, like Moses chose, as Christians to, be, to, to give up that, not, not worry about what other people think about us. Let them think bad about us. But we choose that because it's the greater thing. Amen. And it's the right thing. Let's move on to verse 26, right? And then pretty quick here we'll wrap it up. So that last one I'm going to really, really drive it home. But 26. Faith rejects the world's plenty. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. Because he was looking looking ahead to his reward. That's what I was saying earlier, that he was looking uh, looking ahead for that re looking for his to the reward. Now the guys we, you know that that reward is what the, the things that we lay up in heaven, the treasures laid up in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the things that are today uh, here on this earth, in, in this world, the worldly things, they're just here today and gone tomorrow. They're not lasting. You can have all of them that you want. And you can be caught up with them. But you sacrifice your relationship with God by doing so. Amen? Read that again. He regarded disgrace for the, for the sake of Christ. Now isn't that interesting? He didn't. Uh, that he said for the sake of Christ. I've heard people say, you know, uh, he's talking about that he was, uh, what he was going to do by delivering, he was going to be a type of Christ by delivering the people from Egypt. That's what he's talking about. He didn't know that's what he was going to be doing. So, 
That's not what he. That's not what he's talking about. I believe it's talking about Jesus Christ Himself. He's talking about the Messiah. And for the Messiah's sake is the reason I do this. Verse 27. Faith rejects the world's pleasures. Excuse me, pressure. <laughs> we already did pleasure. Pressures. Verse 27. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He, perse he persevered because he saw he saw him who was who was invisible, meaning God Himself. He didn't see him, but he knew he was there. He saw him in his work. He saw him in in, uh, in, in deliver. I mean, and guiding him through the process through this uh, through his life. That's what he what he saw. That's what he means to uh, the invisible part of God. But let me read that again. By faith he left Egypt. Not fearing the king's anger. What he's talking about there is that uh, the first time that Moses left is when he was, a, uh, like I said, 40 years old. And then he spent another 40 years out in the desert. He gave up the things of Egypt for the things in the desert gladly. In fact, uh, the, the way some of the interpretations are, guys, is that he considered, he considered, he, and, it's like I'm writing down the pros and cons. Egypt or the desert? Egypt or the Israelites? And, and he chose to completely wash his hands of Egypt and to be 100% sold out to the, to the Israelites, to, to his, uh, his native uh, people. But it's, it's speaking about that right after he had killed that guard, that he, that Egyptian guard that he went into the desert. That's what that's what this is referring to. The first time that he went out into the desert. The second time he left Egypt, he did it boldly by taking the uh, delivering God's people from Egypt. Amen. All right. Let's go on to verse 28. We're moving right along. Amen. By faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. So that the destroyer of the of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of of Israel. Faith accepts God's provision. The provision was there, guys, and there's a lot of faith that goes into this. Uh, they've already been through the nine plagues. They were to the at the tenth plague, and God said that He's going to send the the angel of death around to kill the firstborn of every uh, of every man, a male, whether animal or, or uh, I don't care if they're 90 year old, if they were the first born from their mama, they will die. It didn't make any difference. They're going to die. But he instructed them, and that's what he's talking about, the Passover. In fact, let me read that again. By faith, he kept the, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood what that, rep what that represents is the, the Passover the Passover was established when the Israelites were delivered from Egypt. On that tenth plague, God instructed them to take a lamb, slaughter that lamb, gather its blood, and take a, a, a brush made of hyssop and uh, a bush. And, and, uh, and the, I don't know where he got sprinkled, but he said put it on the, on the uh, top of the head of the uh, doorpost and on the sides, and that's where we get this this door. I did a sermon one time, and this is kind of what they did. If he says, you know, you're fixing to die, you, you, some of the some of the people in your family are fixing to die. You've already seen nine plagues come uh, take place that came true, just as Moses said by God's uh, command that it would happen. You're thinking, man, we better. I want to make sure that this, when it comes, that it sees my house. <laughs> I don't want to sprinkle nothing. I'm not going to sprinkle. I'm going to here, here it is. There, see that blood. See that blood. I'm, let's connect the dots even, and I want to make sure that you see that. And I, the reason I did it like that is because if you look at that, it makes a cross. When you the the top of the head that represents his the uh, the crown of thorns that's this mashed into his head that made the stain on that cross. And then the other two, the, the doorpost represents his his hands being nailed to the cross. Amen. 
And he said, I respected that. Let's read that again. By faith, Moses kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood so that the destroyer of the, of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. That's what he's talking about. He had faith that it was going to happen. He had faith that by taking... There's no power in, the, in that lamb's blood, guys. There's not power, but there is obedience. And there is a step of faith that takes place when they did it. Not to mention that they had to, they had to cook the lamb in a certain way, and everybody in that house had that lamb eaten and gone before morning. Amen? So there's a lot of hurrying up going on there. But the faith is just that. You have faith that God said this is going to happen, and it's going to happen. So I step out in faith, I slaughter the lamb, I cast the blood, I, I mix it up and, and, and with that brush, and I get it on the doorpost. Amen? <coughs> All right. And the final point that I want to make is faith accepts God's promise. Verse 29. And we're going to wrap this thing up right in here, but it's going to take just a little bit. All right. By faith, the, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Guys, what Moses was facing at that point right there, he had just delivered the people from Egypt just as God had commanded him to do. He knew it was, uh, and they went through that plague, and they got everything together, and Pharaoh said, get out of here, finally said, go. And they were on their way, and Pharaoh changed his mind, and he sent out his, his, uh, his army, all of his army, to get them back and bring them back to Egypt. And they were on their tails. In fact, y'all, uh, remember how that story goes? That there was a pillar of fire that, that kept them from... from uh, Catching up to the Israelites, God protected them. And they seeing the pillar of fire and the smoke and things of that, uh, representing God Himself coming down to, to protect them, being delivered, going through all those plagues, and they started grumbling to, to Moses, saying, and, and sarcastically, by the way, they said, uh, You know, Moses, weren't there enough graves? Over there in Egypt, why you got to bring us out here to die? Was there not enough uh, over there? Is that why you did it? I mean, it's just, could you believe that? Make you want to snipe them, huh? That'd make me mad. <laughs> Going through all of this stuff, I'm having faith in God. You ought to be having faith in God. And you start talking to me like that. But Moses had faith in God. He knew that, you know what, he did, uh, the promise of Abraham is uh, it, that you got, God's going to keep it. That's God. That's who He is. He's going to keep that promise. So Moses knew that God was not going to leave them out there to die. They should have had faith in that. Everybody knew the promise. Everybody knew the promise. If you were Israelite, you know the promise of, of uh, Abraham, that God gave Abraham. That they were going to be led into the promised land. That's what they were probably chanting. Even they knew that they were being led to the promised land of Canaan. In Canaan, and and, and but, but Moses had faith, and his act of faith was that he went down to the shoreline of the Red Sea and he touched it with the staff, and it began to be parted. Amen. God strengthened His power. Started out. I want you to think about this in your mind's eye how that was. I don't know how wide it was or nothing like that, but could you imagine just the water just, just parting like that and just building up in a mighty wall that you can walk through? But not only that, but all the moisture in the ground being completely sucked out just like that, that it was just as dry as a desert they walked through. Can you imagine that? And they started walking through there. Guys, I'm telling you something. They were probably afraid. They were already doubting. Thought maybe they're sent out here to die. The Pharaoh's armies, they're going to come over and kill every one of us. Or take us back. And then some of them probably saying, well, at least we had, I know they did later on. Moses, Moses went up to Mount Sinai that they were saying, you know, at least we had 
a quail and all that kind of stuff over there. We were slaves, but man, we had it made as slaves. But uh, could you imagine going down into that? I guess it's where they have to have faith. They followed Moses and his faith. Seeing the things that, uh, that God's power and strength was activated through Moses, through his faith. But they had to have faith to go into that, between that water. They're already doubting, like I said. They're thinking, man, this could come down on us. <laughs> and we're going to drown. And you got, like I said, Pharaoh's armies right back behind us. Guys, they had to hook them through there. They probably saw fishes and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what they saw, but they probably saw a bunch of stuff in that water. Kind of. Could you, yeah, that'd, be, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> but they got through the other side. In fact, I heard one story. Some people want to have doubts. Said, you know, the, 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 uh, it was only like a stream at that time. So that, didn't have, that wouldn't have had to part it or nothing like that. And I think back, think about that thing. Well, isn't that this... Uh, uh, God's glory that he drowned the whole army in the spring. See, I don't doubt it at all. If you want to think it's a little stream, that's up to you. Call it a sprawl. I don't care. A drop. But God drowned the whole army in whatever, whatever it was. They died. The Israelites got through without unscathed. They got through it. But they had faith. They were doing it for the right reason. Pharaoh's army, it wasn't that they had faith, but they were going through that thinking, well, I, we're gonna, they got through it, we're going to get through it too. On our own power and strength, we're going to get through it. So you don't get through the stuff on your own power and strength. The walls come tumbling down. Amen? The waves come crashing down when you try to do these things in your own strength. But they got through. In fact, guys, have you ever... I know some of you feel like this right now. That the stuff is... There's, the, you, you feel like you're just drowning. And you can't get out. There's so much going on around you. You feel like you're going to be completely consumed by the circumstances you find yourself in. Guys, two years ago, almost... Uh, it'll be January 15th, two years ago that I found out that I had I was diagnosed with brain cancer. And let me tell you something, my world started coming up and down. It was crashing down. But I either had to have faith in God that He was going to get me through this, and here's the way I felt about it. You know what? It's all coming down. It's all coming down. But I felt like Paul did. For me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. If He gets me through this, then I'm going to praise Him all the more. But if He doesn't get me through it, I'm going to praise Him all the more. Because I know the final, the final, uh, in, the, in the end, I'm going to be with Him forever. And that beats anything that you can, uh, that you can experience in this world. Amen. So guys, I know this, that some of us are going through right now, but like the, like the Israel, like a, the faith of Moses to go through that uh, when everything was just surrounding him, he had faith that God's promise would come true. You can have that same faith today. Amen? Your, your circumstances, wherever, wherever you find yourself, guys, just remember, you're going to go through it. But God promises us, and He makes many, many promises. And He's always good for His Word. He makes many promises. And one of the things He promises is that, that, that I will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you think He's not there, guys, you're wrong. He's there. Now, if you don't realize it, and like I said, maybe it's because... Maybe it's because... Uh, you're out of fellowship with Him because of your choices. Fellowship with God is having conversations with Him. You know, I miss my... Uh, my dad's been passed on for some time now, but I miss some of the conversations I had with him. He used to be able to talk to him. Can't do that anymore. 
Guys, that's never the case with God, your Father, your Heavenly Father. Prayer is just having a conversation with Him. Sometimes the things that this, this the, the decisions that we make spiral us down a, into a place where we don't have that fellowship with Him any longer. And all you've got to do is just tell Him, God, I'm sorry. Father, I'm sorry. Now just, can we talk? Can we talk? And guys, He forgives us. I mean, He, he brings us right back into a, that great relationship with Him. And all of these things that we're going through just seem to start fading away. I love that song, that, uh, that hymn, that uh, keep your eyes on Jesus. All the things of this world just fade away. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Now that's how it is. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <coughs> and the things of earth go strangely dim. In the, in the great uh, the power of His wonderful, wondering grace, I believe is, is what it says. But isn't that true? Guys, I, I find myself sometimes just, uh, I don't know, I'm empty, you know, and just... Uh, know something's missing, but I'm not talking about the kind of emptiness of salvation where you cry out to God for, for, for salvation. But just the, you know, I just can't seem to bring a prayer up on my lips and just, uh, I just, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I'm just, something's missing. You know what, y'all know what I'm talking about? But what I've found is that it's only a conversation away. It's only a conversation away. If I don't wake up every morning with a prayer on my lips for God, then my day doesn't go right. In fact, I do believe in rituals. Brian, I'm going to wrap this thing up right in here. But uh, I believe in rituals. You know, we're, we're, we're right here. We find ourselves at, uh, at the cusp of the new year and... and uh, you know, people start making New Year's resolutions and things of that nature. I, I kind of agree with that because God, I believe, He wants us to, to, to strive to be better, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to reach further, to, to uh, run the race a little harder this year than last or the next year than this. To be better, He always, you know, we should strive for that. And New Year's resolutions help that. But you know, I have I have rituals, and if you don't have rituals, God, I suggest that you start to have rituals, habits, rituals and habits. My ritual every morning is that when I wake up, I go into the, uh, I get my PJs on and and run into the to the bathroom, <coughs> and I take care of my teeth and all that stuff, you know, blood and. Uh, Gargle with the, do all of that stuff, and relieve yourself, and uh, then I go in and, and make a pot of coffee, and I go down and I sit down in the chair in my, uh, of course in front of the, have the TV right there, but I don't turn anything on, it's quiet, and I turn the light on right beside me. Sometimes I grab my Bible, but I start praying to God right then. I'm, I'm right there, I'm alone. Just me and him. And I always start, you've heard me say this before, but I always start my prayers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And I always put the us's and theirs and ours in there too. Because i got a family. And I've also got a church family as well. So I include all of you guys in in my prayer there, in my thoughts and minds. I'm, I'm covering all of that. Don't ask Him, no, not, not allow me to be led into temptation, but deliver me from that evil one that's going to tempt me. And I remind myself that He is the power, He is the strength. And it's all for His glory. And I go on to pray for those 
that are on my prayer list every morning because they're still going through. Cindy Brown is on top of my list. She's always at the top of my list. And I always go through people that uh, that uh, are in need, that I know are in need, that I said that I would pray for them. They ask me to pray, and I say, yes, I will. And I pray for them. don't really pray for myself. I just uh, thank God for getting me through another day. In fact, that's the way I close my prayer at the end of the day. Is, is uh, At the end of the day when I'm going to sleep, I don't pray or don't ask for nothing. I just say, thank you, God. You know, conversations like this, here's what I do with my wife. I always just give her a kiss. I love her and, I, and good night. Just do the same thing to God. Just tell God I love you. Thank you for getting me through this day. and I'll see you in the morning. Amen. <coughs> but those are rituals. And as long as I keep those rituals going, I am in fellowship with God. It keeps me in fellowship with God. And then, and then let me mention the, the very next ritual. I told you I turned that light on. Then I pray. Then I open my book up and I read. I open the Bible up and I read. God, what do you got me to do? The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Amen. So read it aloud. Guys, we, we, are gained, we gain faith here on Sunday morning when you hear me read God's Word. Amen? It, it's, sometimes it's important to just read it out. Get the verbal. Get the, out there and loud through it. It goes out there and circles back around. It comes back in your ears. It goes into your spirit. Amen? And it builds your faith. Faith cometh by hearing. And hears the Word of God. I'm also reminded in John, the very beginning of his gospel, that he, uh, he lays it out that, that Jesus is the Word. In the beginning was the Word. That's Jesus. And that Word created and made him. And the power and strength that created this universe is living in you. Amen? If He's not living in you, if you came in here with an emptiness, I hope I'm making you jealous and envious about how we're talking about God and His glory and His greatness. I hope you're to the point right now that you're ready to cry out and ask Him to come into your life and change you like He has everyone else in this room. Amen. Guys, if you, uh, I told you before that every opportunity, there's opportunities amongst us and around us at all times to, to bring glory to God's name. And one way that, that we bring glory to God's name is the, 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 the things that we carry with us, the baggage that's with us, when we come into this church house, into His house, we have the opportunity to bring them to His altar and bring glory to His name by being seen, pouring our hearts out to Him. Brings in glory. Great opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity. Today. If you've got something that's crying heavy on your heart, guys, come, come up and let God heal you. Let Him work for you. Amen. If you want to ask Christ to come into your heart, you can do it right where you're sitting. I would suggest that you come forward as well. You can do it right where you're sitting. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you have that emptiness that we described earlier, this uh, I don't know that Frank so eloquently prayed for you this this uh, in the beginning, God, that before we started here this this morning, we prayed. You have an emptiness in your heart. You don't know what's missing. You just know something's missing. The only thing that's going to fit there, guys, all of us know, is, is God's Spirit. And you receive that through His Son, through the price He paid on that cross for our sins. If you'd like to ask Christ to come into your heart now, just, just say a simple prayer like this and mean it from your heart. Just be meant to Him, Lord, I'm a sinner. And right now, Lord, I'm turning from this. Father, I'm agreeing that You're right and I'm wrong. And I want to do things Your way. So Jesus, I'm asking You to come into my heart now. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you rose, that you died on that cross for my sins, that you rose back to life. You're living in me now. 
Lord, I recognize you as my Lord, my, my God, and my friend. From this moment forward, I will serve you in Jesus' precious, precious name. God, if you said that prayer for the first time,